Greetings, everyone. This is the Hipster Snack, and this is the third episode of Snack Talks. Today, I want to talk about an upcoming project that, as of this recording, has not gone live yet, but is coming very soon. And that is the aforementioned Tomodachi Bros anime podcast. It's going to star me, Cog Sound Engine, or Cog, and World Tree Cycles, or Ditaku. Just like any podcast, as you might imagine, we will pick a show. We then will watch the show, or the better part of it. We'll sit down and just hash it out. We'll talk about the animation. We'll talk about the acting. We'll talk about dub versus sub where applicable. We'll also try to hammer all the major highlights and characters, character arcs, uh, things that we like, things that we didn't like so much, ways that the show could be improved, and so on. It's ultimately going to be released on an every other week basis, so roughly two episodes a month on average. It will also be mirrored here on the Snack channel under its own specific playlist, and that way you'll have it as a convenient secondary source in the event that you don't want to go through Podbean. Now, it also should be mentioned that there is going to be some premium features in this podcast. While the main anime review portion of the podcast is going to be free, there's actually going to be a special follow-up, se- uh, I guess you could call it a sub-series, wherein the three of us are going to get more in-depth. We're going to talk more about things that are tangentially related to the topic and sometimes things that aren't related to the topic at all, which we call the Tomodochi Brothers After Hours. And the first episode is going to be JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Season 1. You guys like JoJo, right? We hope to be both entertaining and informative, and we try to mix things up by essentially having a bit of a roulette at the end of every episode, with one very special exception of episodes that are all be clustered together. We will each pick one series that we'd want to review, and then we use a random number generator to not only pick between the three that each one of us puts forth, we'll also have a fourth random option And it may be something that none of the three of us have ever seen before. This is your chance to not only learn about series you may not know about, but that we may not know about. We're really excited to bring this to you guys. It's been a ton of fun developing it, even though it's been a ton of work developing it, which is why it's currently not available just yet as of this recording. We hope to get that fixed here shortly, and you will see a large new influx of content, and you'll get to hear a bit more from me, from Ditaku, and Cog a bit more regularly. So I hope that you'll continue to join me here for Obscure Reviews, Indie Excellence, Snack Suites, and Snack Talks, but will also join us a little more regularly as we start introducing the Tomodachi Brothers anime podcast. And because this episode is going to run a little bit shorter than other Snack Talks, this time I'm actually going to include a little something special. There is actually a lost episode of Obscure Reviews. Now, the reason for this is I scripted it, I recorded it, Cog edited it, and then not only did it end up being the shortest review I've ever written for anything, I couldn't actually find a means by which to get footage from the game that I was trying to actually record. This resulted in an episode that I wasn't really proud of. I didn't really want to put it out there. And I realized that because it was a very simple color matching puzzle game, as you'll actually hear in the body of the review, that I just wouldn't have been satisfied to put that out as weekly content. So the episode was ultimately scrapped and replaced with the Lagaya 2 video. So here at the end of this episode, when I'm done talking here, We're going to actually have the audio for that particular episode of Obscure Reviews, so you can at least hear what would have been. Thanks for joining me here on Snack Talks, and this is the Hipster Snack, and I'll talk at you later. What would have been? What would have been? What would have been? Greetings, everyone. This is the Hipster Snack. Today, I want to posit to you what it takes to make a puzzle game interesting to as broad an audience as possible. Maybe make it like a visual novel like Phoenix Wright. Perhaps embrace the base idea is going to be silly, but revel in it like Professor Layton. Abandon pretenses of dignity and make honey pop? Well, I'll do you one better. How about making it a super fast-paced and frenetic, with a cast of colorful characters, each with their own patterns to use and memorize, a hyperactive competitive mode, a challenging story campaign, and endless replayability? 
If you want to know what kind of game that is, look no further. It's Magical Drop 3. While we in the Western world missed out on most Magical Drop sequels up until they eventually got their Neo Geo ports brought up to the Nintendo Switch, Magical Drop 5 was released on Steam in 2012. Whereupon it was immediately ripped apart and ignored. But that's what happens when you release a game half translated and full of bugs. What a shame. Hmm. Thankfully, as said, we got Magical Drop 3, arguably the best one, on the Switch's virtual console. So let's talk about that as this is actually a good game. The game's basic conceit is characters represented by the major arcana of the tarot participate in a game that involves pulling colored marbles from above and restacking them, trying to match three or more adjacent marbles of the same color in order to cause them to disappear. Then you go until one side is pressed to the bottom of the screen, or one or the other clears their quota of marbles in the time limit, which is usually 200. All magical drop games have always worked in this fashion, and 3 is no different. It's not wholly original, but the game's colorful world and fast pacing making it a fun iteration of the similar concept. And to begin with, the game looks great. For an arcade game that debuted over 20 years ago, it looks better than the magical drop games that came after it, and even compared to contemporary arcade-style games, it still looks fantastic, using a bright, anime-esque animation style. Every character looks distinct and gets their own set of animations, both as super-deformed sprites for a board game-like mode, and for their respective backdrop animations which play as the Marble Madness unfurls. The animations are fun and express a character's smugness when they're doing well or their frustration when a rival gets a big combo executed. Best of all, it doesn't interfere with gameplay. The marbles are colored with a different jewel-like texture, making them pop from the background, so you can always stay focused on where the action is. No matter how distracting. The music in this game is just divine. Every character gets their own motif, like how the star gets a poppy little ballad or how Justice gets a heroic anthem. While due to being super fast-paced puzzle action title, you may not have much time to appreciate them all, try to tune your hearing in from time to time. You'll probably be pleasantly surprised just how nice it is and how well it complements the pace of the action of the foreground. Each character gets their own theme on top of the overworld tutorial and end credits, so it's all worth listening to. Speaking of, the characters also influence the gameplay experience. Each character has their own drop pattern, which influences how your colored marbles, well, drop, throughout the course of their game. My best is the Chariot, who gives you a good mix of potential combo chains, but offsetting certain colors in just the right way works for how I play this sort of game. Mind I'm not perfect, and Magical Drop 3 is at its heart a quarter muncher arcade cabinet, but thankfully the new emulation afforded from the virtual console means that just tapping the L button feeds a virtual quarter into said cabinet. Here's a fun challenge. Play the adventure board game mode. Keep track of how many quarters you pop in in order to complete it. Could be its own self-imposed challenge run. And each character has their own story mode campaign, which will vary in which opponents they face and how their drop patterns match up against any given enemy. You'll also have the aforementioned board game, which adds elements of randomness, which can be eased by your skill at the game, meaning future runs tend to be easier once you learn to adapt to things it can throw at you, and lastly, you have a survive mode, where you try to clear a certain number of rounds worth of marbles. I haven't made it all the way through that with anyone just yet, but I'll report back when I do. And lastly, the entire point of these puzzle battles is for the titular Magical Drop, an artifact that can grant the winner any one wish they desire, usually to some comedic effect as the character oftentimes phrases their wish in a vague or broad way, and they get a bit of a backhanded monkey's paw effect added. According to what little lore there is for these games, the Magical Drop takes 10 years to recharge, so when it's ready to be used, the competition for it becomes fierce. Especially as in this game, with the villainous Wheel of Fortune and her flunky, the Tower, guarding the Magical Drop until it regains its full magical essence. At the end of the day, despite being an oldie with some limitations, it's a goodie. You should absolutely pick it up and play it if you get the chance, and it only costs 8 bucks USD on the Switch eShop to pick it up. Which, to be fair, is a lot less than you'd probably spend playing it in an actual stand-up arcade, rare as those are. Get it, play it, go head-to-head -head against friends. I almost forgot to even mention that since I usually play these games solo, but this game has a super engaging versus mode between players, which can get pretty intense. There's no reason not to play this underrated classic. This has been the Hipster Snack, and if you like what you saw here today, you can let me know by hitting the like button down below. If you want to see more content like this every Monday, just tap the subscribe and bell icons down below to be alerted to when these videos go live. And leave a comment down below on which character is your favorite. Join me here next week for more obscure reviews and indie excellence. 
I will see you there. Hey everyone, this is the Hipster Snack. I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention that I'm holding a bit of a contest. You see, the channel is rapidly approaching 100 subscribers, which is a milestone I never dreamed I would hit within the first year of the channel's activity. That in mind, I am opening a poll, both on my YouTube comment section under the page itself and on the Twitter at Hipster Snack, where you can vote for a game you want me to review for the 100 subscriber special. The only limitation is it has to be something that I have a means of playing, and it can't be something that gets me banned off YouTube for having played it. That said, go wild. Whatever game you want me to cover for the 100 sub special, I will do when that time comes. So be sure to leave your vote either in the comment section on my YouTube channel or on the pinned tweet at Hipster Snack. When the subtotal crests 100, that will be the time that that video is the next to go live. That'll give you something to look forward to, and I will see you there.